another movie reviews with Mark and Mark. But today it's not movies. Today it's TV shows. We're gonna we're, we're gonna review one of the best shows that's ever happened to us. That happened to 2020 easily. It is the best show of 2020. It's probably one of the best shows I've ever watched. Mandalorian season two. I am accompanied by my best friend here, Yoda. I've got my trusty handy dandy lightsaber. I got my coffee filled with my Star Wars mug, thanks to my beautiful, fantastic girlfriend. I got my Jedi robe, but you can't do, you just can't do a Star Wars Mandalorian review without our best friend, Grogu. So, Grogu's gonna sit on my lap this whole time and we're gonna talk, okay? We're gonna get passionate here, okay? Because season two was amazing. But before we jump into this, before we jump into this, I have some exciting news. I have exciting news. Let's just wait a second. Let's mm -hmm. sit for the anticipation. Uh, anticipation sit. We'll do another one. Mm. Fantastic coffee. Um, here's the deal, everybody. Here at Gokumama, we have decided to partner up with a podcast. Uh, this podcast is Disney based. They're an amazing group of people. I love them. I've been following them since day one. One of the founders of the podcast is my dear friend, Corey Benty. I love you, bud. Uh, we've done Savage Races together. It's, it, it was a no-brainer when they called. And they're like, hey, let's do this together. So, officially, as of now, Go Komomo, happiest podcast on earth. We are partners. We've partnered up. We're, we're coming at you together. We're a partnership here, okay? We're like Grogu and Din Djarin. Darren and, 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 and Grogu. We're like Anakin and Obi-Wan. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's a matchup that's meant to be. So we're excited. We're, we're, we're pumped. We're stoked. She's excited. I'm excited. They're excited. It's a win-win for all of us. So please look below and click and go check out their stuff. And also, I have joined in on their podcast as well. I am part of the amazing group called The Star Boys. <laughs> the Star Boys. It's fantastic. We talk all things Star Wars. Movies, TV shows, books. We talk it all. We capture it all. We debate it all. It's nonstop. It's wonderful. So please join us. Now, let's get to the review. Season one. We'll start there really quick, okay? First, sit for the kids. <sighs> Season one was great. We loved it. It was one of the shows that just gave them a good feel, meeting Baby Yoda, grow Baby Yoda at the time. We loved him. He was cute. He's adorable. We just love him. You know, we had a lot of question marks, but it was just good. It was, you know, eh, it was fun. We enjoyed it. We vibed to it, right? Boy, and then it hit. I saw a leaked statement that Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, the Dark Saber, and all be in this. And I was geeking. More Dark Saber. Dark Saber was in the very end of the first one, but I'm talking like the lore of the Dark Saber. So I was geeking. I'm ready for this. There's a lot. And Ahsoka was going to be teasing this one as well, by the way. We'll get there. Uh, so I was, I was stoked. I was ready for this. I was like, give it to me. I'm ready for this now. Right now. I want this more than any other Star Wars content I've ever wanted. And boy, did it deliver. Oh, it delivered more than it could have. So let's take a second. Grogu, take these hands. We're going to give a round of applause. At home, everyone, a round of applause for uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau. Ready? Three, two, one. Round of applause. They have saved Star Wars. After Rise of Skywalker, if you go listen, so you got to go on Happy's Podcast on Earth, subscribe, and then go to their Patreon. I am on their Star Boys. We talked about the ten worst things in Star Wars. And Rise of Skywalker pretty much took up all of it because it's so bad. This has saved Star Wars. Saved it. They saved Star Wars. Amazing. Fantastic. So let's get into it. Here we go. My top three moments of Mandalorian season two. Here we go. Number three. Meeting Bo Katan. So some of you are like, whoa, what? Bo Katan? Why? Let me explain why. I love, 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 love watching the Clone Wars and Rebels TV show. I love it. It's my favorite Star Wars content. Easily. Uh, if you had to say, Mark, pick one, I'm picking the Star Wars TV shows over the movies, and it's not even up for debate, without a doubt. So seeing Bo-Katan on screen, knowing what she means to Mandalore, knowing she's the sister of Duchess Teen, and she's the sister of Obi-Wan's love, the fact that her sister died from the Darksaber, which is in this season, knowing that her sister, well, knowing that she had 
the dark saber last time we saw her sabine gave it to her in rebels season four by the way first episode phenomenal i was geeking i love bo katan so from the moment i heard she was leaking to be in this movie, in this tv show i was like give it to me inject it into my veins let's go full set here so seeing bo katan number three moment for me loved it number two this could get controversial this could get kind of controversial. There's, and the problem is I've sat here and I said to myself, okay, there were so many highlights to this season. How can I sit here and truly choose three? It's impossible. So I said, when I was watching it, what gave me the most Star Wars, oh my God, feel? Right? I think that's fair. Star Wars mug. Happiest podcast mug. Luke Skywalker. So, let me let me give you a little something here. When I grew up, I was a Revenge of the Sith, no, Return of the Jedi. I was a Return of the Jedi kid, through and through, watching on repeats. Han Solo, Leia, Chewie, Luke Skywalker, saving his father. It's an amazing movie. I love it. It was when I thought Luke Skywalker was my hero. He was the best. Then I'd grown up, and I'm like, wait a minute. Luke Skywalker is a little bit of a He's not what we all thought he was. He's a little bit of like a, a kind of a wussy Jedi from what we've seen. We saw him daddy hacking away at, at Vader in number five. We saw him eh, go toe to toe with Vader in episode six, but he wasn't really impressive. He just kind of like escaped through. And then we saw him in Last Jedi and he was defeated, he was down in the dumps, he was sad and depressed, so I was like, man, Luke sucks! But boy, did they deliver. When I saw that X-Wing fly out, I knew right away. I started crying. I'm like, this is it. This is Luke Skywalker. We're gonna see Luke Skywalker in 2020. And seeing him daddy hack away at those droids was just, I cried. I was with my boy. I had Kylo here in my arm. We were crying, Kayla was next to me. I don't think she was crying. She was judging me as I was crying. But like, it was awesome. It was the most, it was the second most Star Wars feel moment I've ever had. I was just sitting in my feels. It was amazing. And when I loved what they did, two things, and we'll move on to number one. Two things that I love is number one, when he opened, when they came out of the elevator, the smoke was coming up out of the, out of the elevator. There's smoke, you couldn't see him. Turns on his green lightsaber. He looks just like his dad in Rogue One. The hallway scene. When he's daddy hacking away at all these people. It's awesome. And number two, his fighting style was just like his dad. His fighting style looked just like him. And it was really cool that they captured that. So good. Sorry, buddy. Thank you. All right, so we're moving on. Number one moment for season two of Mandalorian for me was seeing Ahsoka Tano on screen. And some of you were like, what? First off, who might be Ahsoka Tano? Who is Ahsoka Tano? What? Why? Let me explain why. Like I said, I grew up, not grew up, but I loved. When I was in the mid-20s, I watched The Clone Wars on repeat. Ahsoka grew to be my favorite character. Then I saw her on Clone Wars. Then I saw her go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vader. Amazing. She's my favorite character in Star Wars. Number two, she's behind Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan is the GOAT. And if you don't have a man crush on Ian McGregor as Obi-Wan, I don't know what you're doing here. But seeing Ahsoka Tano show up on screen, was the most Star Wars magical moment I've experienced ever. I loved it, because she's my favorite character. And I got to see her on screen, kicking ass, being awesome, just asking about Grand Admiral Thrawn, like get it into my veins, because my favorite TV show is Rebels. I'm obsessed with Rebels, it's my go-to, it's my number one. I made Kayla watch that one first. I should have made her watch Clone Wars first, that's on me, mistake, honest mistake, can't be perfect. It's fantastic. I, seeing her on screen was just the most magical moment for me. It was incredible. So seeing Ahsoka on screen is my number one. Seeing those blue lightsabers, seeing her just pull them out together like that is just a, it's a, it's a callback to season two. Yeah, season two of Rebels when she's facing Vader. Good touch there, Filoni. I love you. Uh, it was fantastic. Wonderful. Perfect. Majestic. Awesome. So... Those are my three moments, Bo-Katan, Luke Skywalker, and Ahsoka Tano. Honorable mention, Boba Fett, man. Holy fudge. Boba Fett. We finally saw a Boba Fett that Anakin, Darth Vader, hired in Empire Strikes Back. We finally saw it. 
We understood. Before, we were like, what? This dude got his butt kicked by a dude air kicking with his staff. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Like, Han Solo just turns around. <laughs> Off he goes. So it was like, we, didn't, we, were, we never really got to see why Bubba Fett was such a feared bounty hunter. And we did. And it was glorious and wonderful. So it was just really cool to get to see Bubba Fett in his... He's, I would even say he's in his prime. He's a veteran now. He's a veteran. He's not even in his prime. So that's just, it was cool. Now, there's a little theory, and then we'll move on. A little theory here that uh, if you are a Clone Wars and Rebels fan, you'll get this reference. Commander Rex is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars as well. He gets no love because he's a clone, and he's in the Clone Wars and Rebels. He's fantastic. There's a reason why Anakin Skywalker slash Vader hired Boba Fett, because Boba Fett is a clone of the, of the clones. Correct? So, Vader wanted to have Boba Fett because he reminded him of Commander Rex. Breathe the heart out and take it. Brutal. So, those are my top three moments. Honorable mention of my main man, Boba Fett. Fantastic. Wonderful. And again, thank you guys for loving us. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe down below. Please share. Please send the love. Um, and again, happiest podcast on earth. Fantastic group of people. Passionate, funny, entertaining so please go follow happiest podcast on earth they have instagram twitter facebook all of it go to their website go to their podcast subscribe like them love them give them all of the love because they deserve it they're fantastic so if you're any sort of disney fan it's a no-brainer they tackle everything games movies entertainment food top 20 lower 20 whatever pick a, pick a topic they talk about it they're the best and they really are a great group of people they make the effort to make you feel the magic. And that's something that I was really missing during the quarantine is like, I just want to be in Disney. I don't know why I had the desire. I would always listen to their podcast and feel like I'm in Disney. So if you want that magic that only Disney people know that you get from Disney, they bring it and you feel it. I love you guys. Mandalorian season two, the best, the best. I got Grogu, I got Yoda, my saber. I love you guys. Please subscribe. Much appreciated. Much love. He's going to lead us out on the dab today. <laughs>